This video is sponsored by Merch, because if you like doing advanced math, you're gonna love wearing it, or drinking your coffee from it, or having it on your notebook, or your phone. You know what? We have something for everyone, so just check it out. It's really cool. Greetings and welcome back. This is your boy Kamal once again, and today we're gonna be solving an integral equation. And I have been playing around with integral equations over the past few days, and they are pretty interesting. But this one in particular is extremely cool. We won't exactly need much calculus to solve this, rather, we are going to use some linear algebra. And, okay, enough talking about the solution development, let's just get straight to solving it. So, we're looking for a function f such that the integral of f, now let me make one thing clear, that this is, this should be the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt times the integral from 0 to x of 1 over f of t dt. This should equal x squared. Okay, cool. Now, like I said, we're going to make use of some linear algebra, and the specific tool is the famous Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So if you have a couple of vectors u and v belonging to a vector space v on which an inner product is defined, in other words, an inner product space, then we're interested in the absolute value of the inner product of u and v. This thing is always less than or equal to the product of the norms of the vectors, where the norm is the so-called length of the vector. So we have the norm of u times the norm of v, where the norm is defined in the usual sense as the square root of the inner product of the vector with itself. And for the integral equation, we're primarily concerned with the case of when equality occurs. If you have the absolute value of the inner product of u and v being equal to the product of the norms of u and v, then this implies that the two vectors are linearly independent. So we could write u here equal to alpha times v, or v equal to alpha times u, where alpha is some scalar. Okay, cool. But how exactly do we formulate our integral equation in terms of well, inner products and norms. Well, obviously, we need some kind of inner product to work with, and that's exactly what we're about to define. So, let's say we have two continuous real-valued functions, f and g, and we'll define their inner product as the integral from 0 to x of f of t times g of t dt. And this actually works quite nicely because we can define the terms in our integral equation using this inner product. Let's say we take the inner product of square root f with itself. In other words, we have the squared norm of root f, which is the integral from 0 to x of root f times root f dt, which yields, of course, the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. And by the same token, we can define the squared norm of 1 over root f as the integral from 0 to x of 1 over f of t terribly. Sorry about that. dt. But how exactly does this help with our integral equation? Well, now consider the inner product of root f and root 1 over f. This thing would yield the integral from 0 to x of root f times 1 over root f dt, obviously we have cancellation, and we have the integral from 0 to x of dt, which of course yields x. And this implies that the absolute value of the inner product of root f and 1 over root f squared equals x squared. Okay, cool. And if we restate our integral equation in terms of inner products or norms, then we see that this thing turns into squared norm of root f times the squared norm of 1 over f, terribly sorry about that, equals x squared. So comparing our two equations, we immediately see that we have absolute value of inner product root f and 1 over root f squared 
equal to squared norm of one of the vectors root f times the squared norm of the other vector that is 1 over root f which implies that the two vectors are linearly independent so we have root f here equal to some constant alpha divided by root f which implies that root f squared equals alpha in other words, we have the function f equal to a constant alpha. And of course, we'd like to perform a quick check to verify that our function does indeed satisfy the given integral equation. So we have integral 0 to x of f of t dt times integral 0 to x of 1 over f of t dt equal to x squared. So plugging in f of t here equal to alpha, we have integral 0 to x of alpha dt times the integral from 0 to x of 1 over alpha dt equal to x squared. And that means we have alpha times 1 over alpha times the integral from 0 to x of dt times again the integral from 0 to x of dt equal to x squared, which is indeed the case. That was pretty cool. So we use some linear algebra, specifically the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, and of course some stuff in terms of norms and inner products to actually solve an integral equation, which I found quite fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.